Okay guys, so in this part 2 of my React job interview with series, I'm going to show you the coding tests that I thought up for a junior and for a senior, so let's get into it. So what's going to happen here is that I will present the candidate with a skeleton project where I have a basic service set up for them so that is serving up some type of HTML file. Now I'm putting all of this in one project so we're going to have to use our imagination and just imagine that if for a junior they're just going to see the junior thing and for a senior they're going to see the senior thing, right? But anywho, so a basic server that's running on Node and it's using Webpack and so forth and it has a package JSON and then I explain to the candidate that you are only allowed to use what's in the package JSON. So here we have our package JSON with some basic packages basically to do a very very basic React application. And here is our server where we serve up some static ASTIC from the dist, dist folder and we have a body parser and then we basically have a few endpoints like for the senior you're just gonna have one endpoint and for the junior we're gonna have one endpoint and these are the things that we are interested in because what we're gonna do is that as we saw in the readme here we are going to ask the junior will to create a to-do application using node and the goal is to have a to-do list that allows the user to add to-dos that's it now this is a very simple test and as I've, I stated in the previous video if I show somebody a code challenge they've already been to an interview if they pass the interview I should be fairly certain that I that it's worth to giving this candidate a code test just to have a sanity check. That's why I'm not going overboard with super advanced coding tests because it's just not worth my time. I should already have a good understanding of whether or not this person is somebody who could work in my company. You can of course reverse this depending on what screening process that you want. Anywho, uh, let's, let's actually look at this. So as we can see here we have a few to-dos and then we have a just a get there where you can get the to-dos and a post where you can simply add some to-dos to this array, right? So, if we now look at the junior's code test, what we should see here, let's see, I'm on the senior's one here. Let's look at the junior's one. So this is the application that I expect to see from the junior. It doesn't have to be fancy. As I said, all I want the junior to prove to me is that they understand how to set up a React application and how to start working in React because the rest is on me and my team to kind of help them with. They don't have to be masters of React, they just have to understand how it works and how the interaction between React and the server works. That's what I expect them to be able to do. So I can now add another element to this list and that's the entire application. Doesn't have to be that more than that. So let's look through this code that this junior has written. I've taken the liberty of adding some comments just for my for my own sake so that I can remember what to notice here. So importing React and React DOM, good. We are using a component here. Okay, I'm gonna revisit that later to see if that's a good idea, but I can see here that there's a component did mount function here which is really good, which means that this junior understands that, all right, there's a lifecycle event here, that's that's good. I can't, of course, assume that they understand the difference between a when to use a class versus using a, a pure rendered function, but uh, I, I'm just going to say that this is a good, this is a good thing. So the first thing we notice is that they know about ES6, which is great that's fairly relevant and we can see here that they're use that the unit is using a state to hold the to-dos which is great if the, I ha that's why I was very clear about stating that I don't want them to like maybe that is wrong of me but I don't want them to add their own dependencies because if they are allowed to add their own dependencies odds are that they're going to start adding all kinds of libraries that do work for them and so forth and I want the unit to think I want to pr them to prove to me that they understand how things work not how a library does it for them. Then we have this thing here, this dot save to do dot bind. This is really good. The junior under this is very very good because now I see that the junior understands that when you're using a class and you're using uh, the, this keyword, you have these reference issues, which is another topic. But this is very useful. I, this is just a good standard practice to have in general when you're using classes in JavaScript. Just bind, and 
let that be the end of it so that you don't get this classic oh couldn't find something something on the disk object because you had a lambda function somewhere in there and you broke your this inheritance chain anywho knows about refs that's good so there's a ref somewhere here this is good let's see here knows about async await yes I see that that's that's good they understand that we can use more modern practices than using promises promises are okay as well but it's nice to see that like that we're moving towards modern times so we do a fetch and then we grab the JSON and then we set the state to do to JSON. That's great. So when the component mounts, that's when we do the AJAX call and we grab the to do's and we simply add them to the list. That's perfectly fine. And then we have this thing here called save to do's or save to do that takes in an event. Okay, so my guess is that that's going to be called somewhere down here, right? So if we look at the render function here, okay, so on submit this dot save to do. All right, that's kind of what I suspected. So there's a event that comes in and they un this is good. Prevent default means that we don't submit the form because hey, we're using JavaScript, which means that we don't want to submit the form to the server. And then we have the options and all right, so what they're doing here, oh, that's nice. So they're using the input ref we saw earlier and we grab the value from that input ref and we simply add, add that as the to-do and we send that to the server. That's great. And then, yeah, we send the, send the post call here. We grab the response JSON and we set the to-dos again because now we sent the to-dos to the server the server has saved my new list of to-dos and returned the updated list and so we can now reset the to-dos to the updated list and then we clear the value in our input and yeah that's that's basically it's very good and as I can see here yeah they've done a react dom dot render nothing's fancy there great this is a junior that I would be fear I, they, they've proven to me that they understand how React works. I, I would be very, uh, if the junior passed my questions and sent me a, something like this, I would be very happy to recommend them to my, my manager. No problems at all. So, let's look at the senior. So, the senior, let's look at that. The senior will have the junior's test and when, uh, when a to-do is clicked, there should be a React model that shows the to-do. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of context here. This example is a little bit of an extreme case because in my experience people who claim to be seniors or be experienced, I mean I don't claim to be a senior of JavaScript. I So when people apply for more senior types of roles in React I have found more than once that they are maybe I'm too strict I don't know but I found that there's this poison to in there like they, they carry this very weird mindset with them. They only work in React and to me that is not that that's a little bit dangerous because I don't want someone I, I, I don't want to just have someone who's really really good at just React. I want them to be a good developer. And in order for you to be a good developer you have to understand what React is doing for you and not just blindly use the tool for absolutely everything. If you don't understand how the tool actually works then I think that you are less of a developer for it. You don't have to know exactly how to build it yourself, you just have to understand how it works. And you see React has this mindset and the React mindset is that everything is a tree. You stay in that tree and you stay inside of React. And more than once I've found that this has been an issue for a lot of people to kind of, like it's almost like they forget that you know you're working in JavaScript. Yes, there are, you should, the rule should be that if you can do it in React, do it in React. But there are situa situations where you have to kind of think out of, outside of the box. So what I'm going to show you now is a code test that I just want to, like I, if I gave this to a senior, depending on how high the requirements of my manager is, I would simply state that if you can kind of get this working, I will be happy. If you solve it, I'm very, very, very impressed. So let's get into it. All right, let's look at the uh, HTML. I, I didn't show you that earlier, but yeah, the junior and the senior has ba they have basically the same HTML. It's not it's not the important part here. But let's look at the senior's code test the JavaScript part. 
So what the senior should be able to produce is something along the lines of this. So I can now do something like bar and add that to, to the list. And if I click something, there should be a modal that is shown. And if I click, I should it should disappear. That's, that's basically what I'm going for here. That's what I want. So let's have a look at that. So the first thing we see here, okay, the basic things is it's virtually the same thing as the junior with a few differences. So we have an on open and an on close. All right, we can we can do that. Same thing as the junior, basically. Save to do is the same. On open is a little bit different. Okay, so on open, like because of this naming convention, on open, it's it, it's fairly common to see someone call something like that. And it takes in an item, and then it calls set state. Ah, oh, nice. So using object dot assign, we're, what we're saying here is that all right, this empty object, copy everything on state and put it on that object, and then copy everything that is here on top of that. So that means that if state has a property of open that is set to say false, we're going to copy that over and simply set it to true. And the same thing goes for the clicked item. This is a very clean way of changing the state. I, I like this. Same thing for on close. Okay, cool. So here is our, H our JSX. So same t thing basically as the junior. Looks good. With one difference. Here, modal. So we give the modal an open and an on close and some content to show to the user. All right. If I ended here, if nothing, ha if this was all that I had seen, and like there, this model was just operating inside of this React component, then I would, th th then this would have been a topic for discussion with my w with my candidate. I would have to ask them. So how do you deal with the fact that you now have a model that is a child of the DOM tree, uh, or is further down the DOM tree than what you you would like? If the the person I'm interviewing doesn't have any experience working with these because modals are very common on the web it's very very common that you have them and one of the fairly and I'm not going to say standard practices but best practices is that you keep your modal and tooltips and anything that needs to always be on top of the rest of the page as a direct child of the body tag this is what I want to test this per the senior with in this code test. I want to figure out if they've ha ever had to deal with this because most developers will use a f library. There are tons of libraries that allows you to do this sort of thing in React, and it does it for you. But if you have never under if you don't know how it works, then you will make this mistake. Then you will just add it here without thinking it through. And that's what I want to test, because you have all types of issues if you have a modal or a tooltip or something that always needs to be on top of everything that is not a direct child of the body tag. It's just a, an experience thing, guys. You can you feel free to disagree with me, but that's what I've found. Many, many times I've found this to be an issue if you don't abide by that rule. So now let's look what a a what would what I would. S I, if I saw this, if somebody sent me this, I would be extremely impressed. Because the only, uh, honestly, guys, the only reason I know this is because I was in a, I, I was creating a tooltip component from scratch for a big, big client back in the day, and I couldn't really do, like, I needed to do it without any other framework. So I went and looked at the, like, the actual, like, like the mainstream. React modal libraries and just went through their source and read through that and I mean these people are geniuses like it's just genius and I kind of just understood how it worked and that's the only reason why I know this so this is as I said a little bit of an extreme case I don't expect a someone who is like good with React to necessarily know this because it's this is above and beyond in my personal opinion. So let's have a look here. So we declare a node, whatever that is, and we set that to null. It's not a const for some reason. All right. So we have this component called a modal, and we set the state to nothing. And then we have this static method, get the derived state from props, which is is like the, this is React 16 and forward for basically we'll receive props. So we get the next props and the previous props. So what we do now is that we basically check where, like if the if the state has changed we simply say okay if there is a node 
then we simply do a render of the modal box, which is another component that's coming later. And then we use the spread operator to spread all of the properties that were passed into this modal component. Because remember, this is the component that is getting all of these properties. But for some reason, we have this wrapping another component that we internally render to this node, whatever the node is. Let's look at the node. So component did mount node equals document dot create element div. Okay, now I get it. So we're creating an element. We're using just JavaScript to create an element. Then we append that element to the body. So if I now go to the DOM here and I check and correct, here we have my modal. There's a modal that is hidden at the body level. So what we did here, and this is important to understand, we broke out of the React DOM tree and went into regular JavaScript and simply appended this node while remain while containing the reference in this variable. So what happens now is that we now actually have the ability to, to be outside. We can actually add this component inside of our React tree. We can actually have it as part of our, of our React tree, but the actual implementation is found at the body level. That's how we can guarantee that this model will always be on top of everything else. So if we did mount, we append the child and then we do a React DOM like render basically with everything that goes into the modal box. We spread up out all of the properties that this component is receiving. If we unmount, we simply do our cleanup as you can see here. And then finally, we render a script tag. Now, why would we return a script tag? Well, because in order for us to actually have a reference in the DOM structure to this component, we want to return something. But what can we return that is fairly safe? Well, returning a script tag is fairly safe because script tags are not necessarily, they don't get affected by CSS, for example, which makes this a fairly safe thing to return. I'm going to be honest, guys, when I saw this in the React modal source, I kind of, I almost wet myself that the, I, I didn't understand it first. And then I understood it. And it was absolute genius, in my opinion. So why the child component? Well, we because we need a, to add a model to the body so we can be sure that it will always be on top of all the other elements on the page. And this is the child component. So as we can see here, content on close and open, this is what's happening up here. This is what we're passing to the modal, which is this component, but things we're using this operation that we we simply pass it down to the modal box, we're fine. This is the thing that the user is seeing. When I click here, this is the box. That's this component. So now we can see that we have, all right, so if it's open, we call whatever click catcher open. We set click catcher open, and otherwise we simply set click catcher. And then we have this thing here, so which is just a div and an on click, which is fairly straightforward. And then we have the modal. OK. But where does the, OK, so let's have a look at this. Why are we wrapping a div in another div? Let's look at the CSS for this one. All right, so we have a modal. Seems fairly straightforward. And there's this click catcher thing. What's this? So position fix, display none, justify content, center align item. Ah, OK, I think I get it. So what we're doing here is that in order to achieve this effect where we click outside of the modal, if I click, I should remove the modal, right? So the way that that works is that we have this element that covers the whole page. And then inside of it, we simply put this little box that we call modal. So the click catcher is this element that covers the whole page so that if we click, it simply disappears. That's where, why the click catcher is there. That's pretty clever. Okay, cool. So yeah, this if if you sent me something like this, I would be completely blown away. And uh, yeah, I would simply tell my boss that this person is either a genius or they copy pasted all of this code from some other other geniuses re repository. Because this is like, as I said, guys, this the, the intention of this code here is just to illustrate you an extreme example and a challenge that I would present to a senior to figure out if they are poisoned by the React mindset. I want, as I said, I want to test to if the senior is able to break out of React and actually think about how things work as opposed to always working within React. So 
that's basically my mindset for this. It may be may not be the best test in the world, but it's uh, it's a test that I think will illustrate very quickly whether or not someone is a true senior of a front end. Have a great day.